Hi everyone, my name is Jin Cao. I would like to share with you my interview with Ed Paul, the CEO of World Lopet. First, let me apologize for the poor sound and image quality, as well as my substandard journalism skills. I was hoping to interview Ab before the Berkey, but uh, the winter storm uh, kept Ab uh, at the Chicago airport for many hours, so we were not able to do the interview uh, in Hayward. As a result, we moved the interview to Mall of America after the race. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Blair Flickinger, the marketing uh, director at Berkey. This interview could not have happened without her help. Hi, uh, thank you, Ab. And uh, can you uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, yourself, your position at uh, World Lapet, and uh, what uh, World Lapet is? Uh, let's start uh, from this Burgopet. Burgopet is an uh, organization which uh, unites uh, 20 biggest uh, ski marathons of the world and it was founded already in 1978. So it is uh, only one and uh, the best uh, ski marathon of the country can be the member. So. Even if there are many uh, good races, for example in Norway, only uh, one and the best uh, can be part of the World Cup. So, uh, uh, this is a statue of this, uh, of this organization. And nowadays, um, we also incorporated other races uh, uh, via global calendar to, to we try to unite uh, this world of popular uh, cross-country ski marathons. Into one, one umbrella. Sure. So this is uh, this is the organization where I work, and I'm uh, CEO of this uh, this uh, organization. It's a non-profit organization that uh, it uh, plans on uh, membership fees, which are the, uh, given by all the member uh, races, member organizations, and. Uh, I run every day errands uh, already now uh, six years, but I work also on World uh, in volunteer basis and in other positions uh, years before. So I have been uh, uh, involved uh, in, uh, in doings of this uh, organization over 20 years. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I really admire your effort, uh, our pleasant uh, experience uh, at uh, any one of those uh, races is uh, in part uh, due to your effort, for example. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the purpose uh, of the organization is uh, not only focused on uh, uh, skiers, mm -hmm. it also unites uh, knowledge of the race organizers. So we are meeting every year, uh, all race organizations meeting once a year. Uh, we rotate the location every year. One uh, member country is a host of this uh, this conference, and uh, this is where all the organizers can meet, exchange their experiences. Understood. And uh, I think uh, this is uh, very very valuable. It was uh, especially well uh, uh, seen during pandemic times where we couldn't meet from uh, face to face. We had two years uh, meetings only online. And uh, when we met again uh, last summer, uh, all uh, participants said that they missed uh, a lot of uh, this face to face meeting to exchange this uh, experiences of the, the organizers. And of course, via this uh, sharing of experience and learning from each other, we also uh, design the participant services and try to improve these participant services from, from race to race to make it uh, 
the, the standard of the top at, uh, uh, as much as possible uh, uh, the same in all the races, but not uh, killing with this uh, uh, the unique uh, creature features of every race. So it's, uh, that uh, all race uh, races must be maintain their pace and their uh, specialties. But at the same time, the goal and basic uh, services would be uh, in, uh, in certain quality. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, uh, my fir first question is, um, which uh, which one of the World La Pet uh, uh, races would you recommend to a beginner, regardless of uh, cost, regardless of uh, uh, geographic location. Only uh, we're only talking about logistics. Uh, logistic wise, uh, of course, are the easiest. Uh, the places which are not point to point, but uh, having a start and uh, finish location. Uh, it's a loop. Uh, uh, in the same place or close to each other. So I would, uh, from this point of view. And uh, even uh, from point of view of uh, force difficulty, I would uh, suggest Kony uh, Ludwiglauf in Germany. Uh huh. Kony, yeah. Kony uh, Ludwig. Yeah. yeah. And uh, logistically, are uh, usually easiest uh, the, the smaller races because there are not so much crowd uh, and uh, everything is easier to understand the, the gas. So Dolomitenlauf is very, very nice uh, race over the start, uh, where it's also uh, logistic is, uh, is easy. Understood. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so um, uh, Dolomite, uh, that's in the, uh, Austria. Yes. Right? yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And um, uh, for example, for uh, those skiers who are coming from abroad, from USA, Canada, or other countries to Europe, uh, I suggest to, to make, uh, because it's a long trip, uh, that it's possible to combine two races during, let's say, 10 days trip, because, uh, for example, uh, Dolomitenlauf in Austria and uh, Marcia Longa in uh, Italy, they are week apart from each other and only three hours car drive from each other. Oh. And the same way, Marcia Longa in Italy and König Ludwig Lauf in Germany also, they have they are week apart from each other and three uh, hours car drive from each other. Wow. So if you think about it uh, in the US uh, and Canada, the distances which are here uh, between airports and uh, and the loca race locations, so they are very close to each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the same way, for example, uh, Tartu Marathon in Estonia and uh, Finlandia, Hilto in Finland, they also are week apart from each other and uh, the two countries are very close to each other. Sweden, uh, uh, Finland also week apart from each other, uh, quite easy to, to uh, travel between these two neighboring countries. So there is possibility to to make uh, this uh, trip uh, to see more, to visit two races uh, with one, one trip if you're coming from overseas. And I know that uh, in, uh, travel agencies who are taking skiers to these races, they are offering these kind of services. Many, many, for example, European travel uh, agencies who are making uh, taking skiers to uh, races, they are combining uh, Gatino Lopet and American Birkebeiner. Oh, yes. I see. Oh, that's or Australia and New Zealand uh, mm -hmm. also because they are weak apart from each other, very long travel. Uh, so it's, uh, I also have done myself this kind of combination trips. Uh, wow. For example, yes, Australia, New Zealand and uh, other countries. Like I told, I even uh, some uh, people I know from Australia, there is a group, they are making even four races in a row. They have holiday ticket and they are uh, making Austria, in Italy, in Germany, and in France or Czechia. So 
Well, my goodness, uh, do they have time to recover from uh, the races? Wow. Yes, That's I think very... it's uh, also about your uh, stamina and uh, how seriously you are taking this uh, this participation. I really top back it or uh, want to do some result, or are you just taking a day off for yourself and take it as a like a long hike or a long long day and. Uh, before moving on to the next question, I would like to explain why we should think about our world lapid. Let's take a look at this 10-year uh, chart of US dollar against uh, Euro. We see that the US dollar is very close to a 10-year high. That means travel in the Eurozone is a lot cheaper. Similarly, US dollar against Japanese yen is almost at a 10-year high. That means the luxury of overseas travel is a lot less luxurious now. So we should seize the opportunity when we can. My uh, second question uh, uh, is that uh, uh, it's about uh, the um, the skiers in the Asia Pacific region. Okay, now um, in the past, um, skiers in the Asia Pacific region used to be able to fly to uh, Europe very easily. Okay, but these days, unfortunately, uh, the Russian airspace is closed to all civilized countries. So it becomes a lot harder for them to go to Europe. And so uh, what's your suggestion uh, for skiers in the Asia Pacific region? Yes, it is at the moment uh, there are a lot of uh, open questions because uh, the, the China just opened uh, up uh, again uh, for the tourism and uh, Japan also very uh, is uh, very careful with opening borders because of uh, COVID. Yeah. So, um, uh, for example, Japanese race uh, took this uh, winter place after uh, four years gap. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, uh, and of course, we have seen this uh, winter that there are less uh, Japanese participants than we usually have at the races. Okay. I see. Uh, but I hope that uh, during the uh, uh, new season, because this season is almost over, in one month uh, we will see more Japanese and uh, Asian tourists again uh, in, uh, in uh, European races and uh, races in Canada, America, because uh, uh, air companies uh, will for sure find ways uh, to restore their flights. Uh, despite the uh, Russian air, airspace is, uh, is closed because uh, if uh, this, uh, China and Japan restart their tourism, I'm sure that uh, also the flight companies will follow. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, of course. So uh, um, at this moment, uh, uh, skiers in the Asia Pacific region will have to. Well, uh, wait a little uh, bit, I would say. Yeah. Uh, wait a little bit, and uh, I hope that uh, from, from next season uh, there will be more and more possibilities. Uh, okay. I have a. Okay, right now I have a, a third question. Um, so, uh, um, personally, I have a feeling that uh, uh, races in uh, uh, races like uh, uh, Gatineau or. Uh, Sapporo would be easier for travelers because, because they are uh, uh, right in the um, uh, major city. city. Yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, for sure, this, uh, this kind of race is uh, easier to logistically also. Um, uh, and um, in uh, race in Japan, for example, they have very good uh, participant services, they have very good uh, public transportation system. But uh, 
I cannot suggest myself because it's uh, one of the few races uh, I have not visited. Oh, but this is uh, but this is in my plan uh, for the next winter. Okay. It was in my plan uh, when pandemic started, so oh, I had okay. to I had to defer have to, that. To, yes. Uh, uh, postpone postpone that. that. But I know that there are many many Europeans. Uh, have been waiting for years to go there and I'm sure that next winter there will be in, uh, in Japan a lot of uh, European skiers to take part. Yeah, understood. And, uh, and the uh, cut is a lot, but of course, also very, very uh, logistically easy, easy place to go. Yeah, understood. Okay, well, get, uh, there is always a uh, gallery experience. We are very uh, happy to, to help uh, with information if uh, skiers have any, any questions about the races. They just need to email to work up at the office main address and we will try to find, if we don't know ourselves the answer, we try to find somebody who knows. <laughs> and uh, of course there is also in Facebook a uh, uh, special group, Work uh, at Skiers Forum, where uh, uh, skiers can uh, ask uh, for uh, questions, uh, uh, from other other skiers who are also uh, traveling around, asking for travel tips, asking for some help for something, uh, share the car, taxi, or uh, find accommodation or anything. Or uh, so, uh, welcome to join this group and ask your questions. And uh, for sure, there are people who have been in all the places who can answer. Yeah, thank you. Well, I can tell you right now the. Uh, the service that I uh, I want to use the most, and then that would be um, renting uh, skis and poles. Yes. Yeah. Um, if skiers uh, uh, could rent a ski and poles, uh, I'm sure a lot of a lot of a lot more uh, skiers uh, would be interested in uh, traveling abroad. Yeah, because, uh, for sure, yeah. it's easier. Cheaper to rent uh, than to, uh, to uh, travel with the skis. Yeah. But um, uh, there are, in every race uh, location, there is possibility to uh, to find uh, rental skis, and uh, because all these races are taking place in uh, uh, in ski areas, yeah. so just uh, I think it's a good point we could add is to every uh, of at uh, racing on a uh, so I think we can we can use it to, to make this information um, available. Uh, but uh, there, there are possibilities. Maybe they are just not so well uh, exposed at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. but I think re yeah. renting is uh, the, yeah. the sure best option. Yeah, I believe so. I um, have, uh, for example, uh, friends in every country, uh -huh. and uh, usually I don't take my skis with me. I'm traveling only with ski boots. Uh -huh. And I uh, also find the friends who will give me their skis at their location. Exactly. That's it. Um, that's how. Um, that, that's the kind of service that can make a uh, world up at uh, uh, a lot more um, popular and accessible. Exactly. So yeah. yeah. It's a very good idea. Thank you for this. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, thank you for your time. Yeah. Okay. We also talked about reducing the environmental impact at the races. One example would be the uh, Berkey Green measures. And similar measures are uh, also adopted at uh, races worldwide. We also talked about gender equality. App pointed out some uh, races and camps that are female only and and aim at uh, encouraging a female participation in the sport. Uh, App even mentioned that as recently as 10 years ago, there were different fees for male and female participants at some races. Conclusions. First, App is the toughest woman I know. Sorry, Mom. During the interview, her airline uh, texted her about uh, rerouting her uh, on her way back. And 
she has to travel over the world to inspect courses and races. So you can imagine how demanding her job is, both mentally and physically. Second, NATO needs app because by traveling to so many places and inspecting so many courses, she knows the geography of Europe better than many people, and probably better than many generals in the staff of NATO. And three. Races need ski rental service to make them more accessible. Last but not least, please visit World Lopet Skiers Forum on Facebook. I'll put their link、uh, below. Thank you, and see you on the trail.